Welcome back to Reliable Sources. I'm Brian Stelter. Protests are planned today in more than a dozen cities across the country, mostly at airports, a follow-up to what we saw last night. It's in opposition to two things. One, President Trump's temporary travel ban on citizens from seven Muslim-majority countries. And two, his indefinite halt to Syrian refugee resettling. The president seems to think there are severe threats to the country. Fact-checkers and critics say he is severely overstating that. So where is he getting his ideas? Where did the term Muslim ban come from? The way I see it, this all comes back to media consumption and Trump's sources of information, what he's hearing, what he's reading, who he's talking with. So let's look back 14 months to the mass shooting in San Bernardino, California. A few days later on the campaign trail, Trump said this. Now listen, Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Someone wrote that statement for him, and it was the genesis of the term Muslim ban. In the weeks and months after the shooting, Trump repeatedly told an untrue story about San Bernardino. Here it is. In their apartment or their house, in their place where they lived, they had bombs all over the apartment. Do you trust? They had, excuse me. They had bombs on the floor. Many people saw this. Many, many people. Muslims living with them in the same area. They saw that house. They saw that. There's no proof that any of that happened. What happened was a couple of neighbors were interviewed on local TV afterward. They talked about unusual activity and deliveries of packages. Some of this was unreliable secondhand information. But in any case, they never mentioned bombs or anything on the floor. But some right wing websites jumped on it. Uh, Trump essentially received faulty information and reached faulty conclusions. And then he told the story over and over again stoking fear about Muslims. Now, fast forward to Saturday. A senior Trump administration official held a conference call with reporters, this is pretty normal, to discuss the new restrictions. According to CNN's Athena Jones, the official justified the ban by citing the San Bernardino attack. But, quoting Jones here, neither of the attackers in the shooting would have been affected by the new ban. This is why fact-free debates are such a problem. Many conservative websites and some talk show hosts on Fox News are invested in a narrative about brown-skinned boogeymen. They imply that refugees are coming to the America to kill and that the Obama administration left the door wide open. That's BS. Log on to state.gov for yourself. Look for the page titled uh, Facts and Myths About Refugees. Oh, wait. It's gone. You can see right there, the State Department fact sheet was deleted a few days ago. This is part of the changeover from Obama to Trump. Here's what the page previously said. Quote, all refugees of all nationalities considered for admission to the United States are subject to the highest level of security checks. The page went on to say, Syrian refugees go through an enhanced level of review. Now, to be fair here, every administration revises government websites. But the disappearance of a page like this, well, this is why so many people are concerned that the Trump administration is erasing documents and data, in some cases, basic facts. The web is already full of misinformation about immigration. But... The web is also allowing people to respond with real information, allowing them to share their own stories and even live stream the protests at the airports. 